Hello everyone and welcome back to Curtain Up, my monthly series where I talk you through all of the stuff I've been up to in theatre land this month. I've been really lucky and I've already seen a lot of theatre this month so I'm going to crack straight on with it. The first show that I saw this month was Pinocchio at the National Theatre. I booked this a long time ago, I think I booked it like in July or something when 2018 felt like the longest time away. And I booked it so far in advance because I booked it with the National Theatre's entry pass scheme, which is for I think 18 to 25 year olds. And you can get tickets really cheap at like seven pounds and 50 pence or something. So yeah, I booked it ages ago because the entry pass tickets do go quite quickly. And then some appear again on the website um, here and there, but yeah, for the most part they sell really quickly. So so I booked it and yeah I went on the 1st of January so literally first day of the year I was straight in a theatre obviously that's how I roll. I really enjoyed Pinocchio actually it wasn't my favourite film or story as a kid so it was nice that the story did feel kind of new to me. By the way before I forget to mention pretty much everything has been vlogged it'll be linked in the description below and in the cards up here so if you want to check out any of the videos and my full thoughts on these shows then obviously you can go and do that. Check out the description box for loads of links. Yeah, Pinocchio, um, it was a really fun show. I really enjoyed how they did it. I mean, it's the National Theatre. Generally, their productions are very good. And yeah, I had a really nice time. The second show of the month was Banana Man at the Southwark Playhouse. I'm going to go to the Southwark Playhouse a lot more this year, that's for sure. I've purchased their subscription service, which is basically where you pay 60 pounds and then you can get five tickets from that. That's their pay as you go subscription but you pay pay it once and then yeah you can redeem that for tickets which is a really great scheme I did get Banana Man tickets through Todaytix though because they had a little um, Christmas cracker promotion thing going on so I basically got the ticket for free which was really nice always going to try and save money where I can yeah so I went to see Banana Man at the Silver Playhouse it was wonderful to see Jodie Jacobs in a show again I think she's absolutely fantastic the show itself was just a really silly story and I think if you it's closed now sadly but if you didn't go into it with like really serious expectations then you were bound to have a fun night out at the theatre it was just a lot of fun the third show of the month for me was kinky boots at the adelphi theatre kinky boots is one of my favorite shows i love it and i've not been back to it in ages actually i hadn't been there since june last year so it had been quite a while and i went back because i did a cheapest seat video on it i asked on twitter what show people would like me to cover first for 2018 and Kinky Boots was one of their like most requested shows. So I did what I was told and I went to Kinky Boots. <laughs> that video is now up on my channel. So if you want to see what the view is like from the cheapest seats at Kinky Boots, then you can go and check that video out. Obviously, it'll be linked in the description. I mean, I've already said Kinky Boots is one of my favorite shows. I really love it. And it was really nice to see the new cast members as well. So yeah, it was a really fun, fun night out. The next thing on my list isn't necessarily a show, but it's definitely theatre related. I went to see The Greatest Showman at cinema because everyone had been like raving about it. And I was like, I need to see what this is about. And I went in and I adored it. Like, I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was a brilliant film. The music is so catchy. I mean, I know a lot of people have literally walked out of the cinema and like downloaded it or got it on Spotify. And I'm one of those people. I've listened to the soundtrack many times. Something crazy happened to me in the second week of January. I just went a bit mental and I was like, I'm gonna book all of the things. And that's exactly what I did. I got tickets on the Monday to 42nd Street. I got these through work, so they were free. Yes, love a free ticket. Um, it's been a while since I saw 42nd Street. Um, I think, when was it? It was their first preview, so it was March. I think March. It was a long time ago. So it was nice to see the show again. Bumped into some friends who were also there that night, obviously. Um, so that was really lovely. And yeah, the show, I love the tap dancing. The tap dancing is amazing. But in terms of the actual story, the story is just like a bit pants, I think. And I really don't like the way they treat the women in the story. It's not to say that they're treated like really badly but just the way that they are used, like what, the way they're written into the show, it just, oh God, it just makes me go, cringe a bit. I don't like it for that aspect. I'd happily just go for the dancing and like block out the story. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, I feel bad saying that. I don't like trash talking a musical, but um, yeah, not a huge fan of the story of 42nd Street. <laughs> The next day after that, I went to see Matilda again. Another one of my favorites. I love Matilda. And sneak peek, this is actually gonna be for next month's cheapest seat video because that was another one that was pretty highly requested. So yeah, so that's gonna be next month's cheapest seat. So look out for that on my channel. Um, yeah, I adore Matilda. It's one of my favorite shows and it was really nice to see Gina back again. She plays Miss Honey. She is wonderful and yeah, I just, I just love it. And also I had a trunch ball swap, which was really fun. There's not really that many shows considering how much theater I get around to seeing. There's not really been that many occasions that someone has gone off during the interval. And this is something I adore about Matilda because they really make a statement of stuff like this happening and in a good way. So for example, at cast changes that I've been to or like the first night performances for a cast, they've made an effort of someone comes out in a suit beforehand. Um, it's normally like the company manager or someone like that and they announce it, they say that new members are joining the company and this is their first performance and it really like amps up the audience, it's really great. And this happened um, at the show that I was at, obviously someone came out at the end of the interval, um, I can't remember if they were in a suit or not, I think, I think they were, oh, I can't remember. And they said that David Shannon would be off and Simon Shorten would be taking over and everyone cheered and it was really lovely and I was like, my heart because understudies often get a lot of crap from audience members and it's like oh we like the understudy blah 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 so to hear an audience cheer on the fact that an understudy was taking over for act two it really warmed my heart it really made me happy um and it was so fun to watch it was so fun to see and like my brain really thought about it during this show. Like I'm always appreciative of understudies. I think they do amazing work, but to think of like someone, like he was in the, he must've been in the ensemble for act one to then like psych yourself up to go on for the principal, one of the principal characters in act two. And as well, just the whole notion of like, normally you're doing a show, you go from the top of the show and you go on. But like, if you're coming on halfway through, I don't know, it just kind of blows my mind to think that someone could so easily jump in and do part two of the story, having not done part one in that. Like, I know that's what they're, they're trained to do, like they're amazing, but I, it just kind of blew my mind a little bit. On Wednesday, I spent the afternoon in the rehearsal room with Eugenius, the cast and crew of Eugenius, which was awesome. A group of bloggers were invited along to check out how the show was coming along and have a little Q&A with some of the, uh, the cast and the creative team. And that was so much fun. Um, I'm really excited to see what this show is gonna be like at the other palace, which is one of my favorite venues. So that's something I'm really looking forward to in February. But yeah, it was so fun to watch them rehearse. And I got to meet Amy, who I, I adore her blog. I think she's fantastic. So it was really lovely to meet her properly for the first time like in person um yay friends in the evening after the rehearsals i went to see barnum at the many a chocolate factory i'd been meaning to book this for ages but obviously hadn't got around to it and then i saw the greatest showman and i was like i need to see barnum so i booked i booked with get into london theater so it was a little bit cheaper i say a little bit cheaper it was still 40 pounds which it's not a price I love to pay for the theatre, but I will do it on special occasions. And I thought it was really good. I went into it knowing that the story was going to be very different. And I'm glad that I did because it was very different. I'm not gonna say too much because my review of that is up on my channel if you want to go check out my full thoughts on the show. But yeah, um, it had Celinda Schoenmaker and Laura Pitt Pulford and Harry Francis, who I've seen in multiple shows and is horrendously talented. So yeah, I mean, I mainly went because I knew that they were in the cast and I really love watching them perform. But the whole ensemble, the whole, the way they did it all, it was, it was so, so good. And they're doing some discounts on Today Ticks now. So I definitely recommend that you try it and see Barnum. Obviously, 
today ticks referral code plug it's on screen now and linked in the description if you want to get 10 pounds off your order <laughs> 2018 and i'm still plugging away my today ticks code <laughs> but seriously i had a really fun time at barnum so i definitely recommend checking it out and hopefully not being put off by the ticket prices and if you go to see barnum make sure you stay in the bar area before the show don't go straight into the auditorium if you watch my vlog you'll see why. <laughs> on the Thursday of that week, this is beginning to sound like the 12 days of Christmas and I'm kind of here for it. On the Thursday, I went to see Young Frankenstein. I went with my lovely friend, Sam, who has seen the show before. I day sat for us because it's a cheap way to get tickets to Young Frankenstein. So we were on the second row, it was very close. I'd heard mixed things about this show, actually, now that I think about it, like mostly positive, but also a bit like, in terms of the story, which I agree with, because it's again, similar to 42nd Street, the way that women are portrayed, I just cringe. I'm not the target audience for that style of writing and humor. So it was lovely to see Diane Pilkington though. Sam is a huge fan of hers and I've definitely become a fan of hers over the last couple of years as well. I last saw her in um, Whisper House and I saw her in Mamma Mia. Didn't see her in Wicked. She was before my, my Wicked time, but yeah, I think she's a fantastic actress. So it was really lovely to see her. The show was funny, don't get me wrong, but there are some bits where I was just like cringing. <laughs> On the Friday of that week, I went to an industry workshop of a new musical called The Mill on the Floss, which was very exciting. I love seeing new musicals, um, especially ones that are still in development. I think it's very exciting to know about shows like this before most of the world do. I actually heard a couple of songs from this show um, sung at a concert back in 2014. My friend Chloe sang one of the songs and she she broke me. It was a beautiful song and it was a very sensitive time of my life. So I had a breakdown because of it. Um, and then she recently posted on Facebook about doing like helping out with the casting for the show and the cast was really good. Um, so I was like, can I come please? <laughs> and I was invited. It was really nice to go along and support like new British musicals. The show, The Mill on the Floss is based off of a book by the same name written by George Eliot. And it's not a story I know well. I know a lot of people were saying that they'd read the book previously. So maybe it's one of those ones that's assigned in school, but I've never read it before. It was an interesting story and the songs from it are gorgeous. Um, I think they've posted a couple online, so I'll link those in the description if, if they are online to be listened to. <laughs> On the Saturday of that week, the crazy week, it came to an end by seeing Wicked. <laughs> My first Wicked trip of 2018. I am crazy, I know. I day sat with my friend Eddie so that us and Sam could go and see it because Laura Pick was on as Elphaba. And if you've been watching my channel, you know that I've become a crazy fangirl again, primarily because of Laura's Elphaba. So yes, um, I've obviously seen her a few times now and Sam and Eddie hadn't seen her at all. So I was like, guys, let's, let's go see Wigan, let's go see Laura. And thankfully they really liked her as Elphaba. So that was good. And it was nice to be on the front row again. Once you've sat on the front row at Wicked, I think you're a bit, you're a bit like spoiled. You're like, oh, nowhere else is really as good as the front row. And I've now sat on every seat in the middle section of Wicked's front row. I'm proud of it, but I also probably shouldn't be proud of it. <laughs> After that crazy week of theatre going, I kind of burnt myself out a little bit. I had one more thing booked and then for the next week, I was just like, I've ruined myself. On the Monday of the following week, I booked to see Six at the Arts Theatre because I'd heard really good things about this. It had been at the end of my fringe last year and loads of people were raving about it. And I thought, I need to see what this is about because they had a very, like, very few performances at the Arts Theatre. I think it was like every other Monday or something during December and January or something like that. It was very limited performances. So when I first heard about it, they'd already sold out of all their shows. And I was like, oh, that's sad. And then they added another night and I was on it. I was like, I'm booking that, I'm not missing out because otherwise I get FOMO about these things and I just don't like that. So anyway, I booked 
and I went along. I didn't vlog on the night because I didn't know what to expect if I'm honest, but I definitely will be doing a video about it because, oh my God, it was so good. So I'm gonna save all of my thoughts for that video and please do check it out because hopefully it is a show that we'll be seeing more of this year. I really hope that we do. And you know, it's another case of supporting new British musicals. We must do that. <laughs> I'm only bloody going to New York again, aren't I? <laughs> this month, why have I done this to myself? <laughs> I'm going back to New York because, mainly because of Broadway con, but obviously there are gonna be shows as well. And once again, I'm too paranoid to say anything, even though I'm literally going next week and surely nothing will be canceled, but I don't want to, I don't want to tempt fate and have anything be canceled and have to look awkward in this video because stuff has been canceled. So I'm not gonna say anything and you'll just have to wait and see the vlogs that come out because obviously everything will be vlogged. <laughs> Naturally, I am very, very, very excited to be back in New York. I'm really scared about what the weather's gonna be like, if it's gonna be freezing, but I am, I'm so excited for Broadway Con and to see what that's all about. I can't wait to see Jake again and to actually like see some shows together this time because we were meant to see The Great Comet together last time I was in New York and that got bloody canceled, didn't it? So yes. We're gonna see some shows together and I cannot wait. I'm so, so, so excited. And yeah, I've lost my editing mojo a little bit thanks to Vlogmas, but I'm really hoping that by the time I'm back from New York, cause I hopefully won't be editing while I'm out in New York, fingers crossed. So then once I'm back, hopefully I'll be like, yeah, let's edit. And I'll be able to get some amazing videos out hopefully fingers crossed <laughs> that is everything for january it's been a crazy month i don't think february is going to be as crazy she says optimistically <laughs> for my bank account for my sanity for my sleep schedule i need to kind of chill out a little bit <laughs> i can't help it i just love going to the theater so Anyway, that's everything for this episode of Curtain Up. I really hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please do give it a thumbs up and obviously let me know in the comments what you've been up to in Theatre Land this month, especially if it's any of the shows that I've been to. I would love to know your thoughts. If you'd like to see more of me in the future, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I make a lot of theatre content. So if you like theatre, which I presume you do, otherwise why would you sit for like, 20 minutes of a girl chatting about theatre. I mean, you do you. I'm not gonna judge. I'm not gonna stop you, but you should probably subscribe if you have enjoyed this. <laughs> I hope you're all doing really well and I will see you in my next video. Bye!